afternoon and thank you very much for this incredible experience and privilege and very grateful and thank you also for this beautiful summer school it's not easy to summarize it but i will try so um, the tip of my presentation is entitled i have a dream an analysis of russia's immigration needs in the united states of america and the table of contents is divided in four parts concerning introduction presentation analysis and conclusion so in my opinion, it's really important to start with our consideration coming from an event that happened on March 25th, 2020 in the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm talking about the tragic death of the African-American George Floyd and Cuthbert at Pino to the ground, uh, held with his knee pressed to the neck for nine minutes by a white agent who was sent to sit as reopened the team of the racial question in the United States of America. But to try to understand the complexity of the phenomenon and the consequence birth of Black Lives Matter movement, it's really necessary to do well on the main stage, the historical journey that concerned the living conditions of the African-American population. And to do this, it's really necessary to analyze some fundamental steps related by um, characterizing events. And the first event is the Atlantic slave trade, because um, the massive presence of black population in the United States of America um, is attributable to the phenomenon as the Atlantic slave trade. It was a real deportation process that saw the main colonial powers of the period forcibly transferred uh, between the 16th and 19th centuries and um, millions of human beings from Africa to America. And it's not possible to quantify with certainty um, the overall extent of this phenomenon, but the majority of the contemporary historians believe that 12 million human beings were transferred from Africa to the American continent. But the slave trade uh, began around the 16th century, uh, you know, when on political level, the 13 American colonies were um, established and directly dependent on the Great Britain. And during the war of independence, the migratory flows didn't suffer any interruptions and you know, the slave regime was not a tenuate uh, and the black slaves uh, were only marginally involved with, uh, in the war. And the conflict ended with the victory of newborn United States of America with this constitution, with this egalitarian principles, but no was universal. I mean, uh, implicitly, you can think that these principles were universal for white people and not for black people. In fact, for this reason, Harry Clay, one of the most uh, important person in this time and this history, said these words that underline also what I mean. This was for desirable with the utmost respect due to them to repatriate all of the black population. And the consequence of this was the foundation of Liberia, was a state in West Africa. Liberia is a name that reminds the freedom. And as you know, Congress formally abolished the slave trade. But um, with this act, a profound difference began to emerge between the state of North and South, because North was an abolitionist state, and South, no, was a supporter of slavery. So after the end of the civil war, especially in the northern states, uh, they underwent a period of strong industrialization produced an important migratory phenomenon. And the condition of black people uh, was not very good. In fact, uh, there was the Ku Klux Klan movement 1925 had 4 million members that was uh, responsible for killings, beatings, acts of violence against the black population. But there was another important factor that was in 1927 of this migratory uh, from South to North and was the Mississippi uh, flood. And as you can see, the Ku Klux Klan was created to regenerate our helpless country and to redeem the white race. So you can see two words, white race. But after slavery had been formally abolished in the United States after the Civil War, there were the Jim Crow laws. And especially in this period, uh, this regulation served to maintain the segregation in all public services and establish at the fine of separate but equal. And especially in this case, there is a Plessis versus Ferguson. It's a very nice, sentence to see all of what I'm talking about. But I don't know if you know the Negro Motorist Green Books was a particular group of greeters that indicate uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, clubs, safe ways for traveling for Black people, which could have avoided discrimination and unpleasant situation. But what's important to say that in the South, the situation was completely different between Black and white. You can see the use of 
different lavatories, toilets, drinking uh, water buckets, pails, cups, dippers, or glasses. And everywhere in the South, everything is completely different. So there are some pictures that testimony all of that. Also, by the right to vote, um, the approval of these restrictive measures on the right of African American was allow um, by the almost control of the elected office uh, by the white people. But there is another important event in Virginia in 1951, where um, a large group of students began to protest against um, an equal and segregation school system. And the case was brought uh, to the Supreme Court, Brown versus Broad. And it's very, very important because for the first time, the segregation was illegal in school. But at the same time, there was the George Wallace words that said, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation always. And another area in which there was a strict racial segregation um, was in public transport. And where he's a testimony of Rosa Parks, to refuse to give a place to a white man. Uh, also the media attention because the arrest promoted the black community to a systematic uh, boycott um, for the traveling transport in Montgomery, Alabama. And also there is a figure of Martin Luther King uh, with his speech, I have a dream. But after that, uh, the situation is not change because on November uh, 4th, Senator Barack Obama of Illinois become a president of the United States of America, the first African-American elected to the White House. And Vice President Obama was Joe Biden, the actual president. It is not a casualty uh, because after Trump, our policy uh, was sustained by Joe Biden. But um, I would like to analyze like, another important aspect for uh, segregation. The segregation of racial inequities during COVID-19, the Philadelphia case, and the effects of racism segregation on health and mental health. And why Philadelphia? I don't know if you know, but uh, Philadelphia um, is the hyper-segregated city and ranks with top 10 big cities. So have the highest levels of segregation. But um, the residential segregation in Philadelphia is not new. Um, I mean, in the past, they serve civil rights activism. I have the founder of, as you can see in the picture, the NAACP, so the National Association for Advancement of Colored People. And also, there were uh, young people in interactional fellowship, uh, where uh, movements to promote the dialogue between the, in the city of Philadelphia between Blacks and white people. But what happened in Philadelphia today? On March 10, 2020, the city of Philadelphia reported its first case of COVID-19. And from this moment, the racial initiatives and the city uh, began to emerge in late March when Blacks being uh, uh, disproportionately impacted in 45%. So you can see in this picture the difference between Black and white people. Uh, it confirmed the infection when not to be Blacks. But another important thing in this case is how do system of racism impact the COVID-19? For individuals that live uh, in these racially segregated neighborhoods, uh, intelligent system of this structural racism related to the house market, access to healthcare, the food access, the food and security is not easy because you need to um, imagine a circle in which uh, you can see the employment, the housing, the neighborhood, and the transportation. So now in 2020, 2021, the situation in Philadelphia is exactly the same. So this is very bad because we have the NECU data. NECU data um, are important because the index of concentration at the extreme ACA is um, a measure of residential segregation that captures the extent uh, to which the population in a given area. So you can see uh, four pictures. Uh, the, the picture number one showed the IC for non-Hispanic Blacks uh, for zip codes and Philadelphia based on data uh, in this period. Um, the proportion of Blacks in zip codes in the top quartile is 93.6%. So the most racially segregated neighborhoods in the city are located in West Philadelphia, North Philadelphia, and Southern Philadelphia, we can see. In picture number two, there is a composite um, score of neighborhood indicators that increase the likelihood of exposure and community transmission or capture you know, the potential for short-term and long-term 
Also, you can see that uh, the most structurally susceptible neighborhoods are located uh, in West and North Philadelphia. And if you go to number three, uh, you can see the incidence of COVID-19 by zip code in Philadelphia in May uh, 2020. So the highest rates are located in West Philadelphia, uh, South Philadelphia, uh, North Philadelphia, and North West Philadelphia, but the lowest rates is changed because in Center City and uh, near the um, Delaware River. And in the end, in figure number four, uh, you can see the percentage of positive people of COVID-19 among individuals tested by uh, zip code in Philadelphia in May, in May uh, 15, 2020. So uh, the percentage of positive of COVID-19 have a range of 12 to 43%. So what you can see, the section of North Philadelphia and North West Philadelphia are the most spiked. But after that, uh, what are the case of the segregation on the health and mental health on the people? Well, um, about historical time, the certain states segregated uh, homes for the age, orphanage, uh, the institution, in general, all the educational institutions, um, also the Southern State School for the blind people were segregated. So Louisiana required not merely that building a house for black people and white people. And um, in 2015, there was a review that examined how racism affects uh, mental and physical health and people can uh, create depression, stress, emotional distress, anxiety, PTSD, so the post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, suicide thoughts. And often um, there are three main cases that I discovered in this research. Um, racism or in general, the segregation can impact health via several recognition, reduced access to employment, housing and education, adverse the cognitive and the emotional process of people, or in general, uh, dismissing participation in LPD hours has sleep, exercise, or uh, increase the uh, consumption of alcohol and, and drugs. But how to live healthily while facing racism. Uh, in this case, uh, as you can see, uh, there are some suggestions because the research suggests that low socioeconomic status has the same impact on physical health as the smoking, the alcohol use, or in general, also the drugs. And the support of peers, the community could be very important for these people. And uh, having a network of people to talk, to for support, advice, their comfort can help people uh, to reduce this racial discrimination and also reducing access to the employment, the housing, uh, to the socioeconomic that could be very important, especially to compass the depression, stress, and anxiety. But in the end, I would like to share with all of you uh, the words of an activist, uh, very important in my opinion, about the Black History Movement that said, in the last part, what we dream as black people in America is the compassion, justice, and freedom. So just these three words. And in the end, I think that uh, the circle uh, uh, closes from where we start and the tragic death of George Floyd, uh, filmed in real life, uh, seen by millions of users around the world, has brought back the problem of racial prejudice and the event gave life uh, to the creation of this movement called Black Lives Matter aim up uh, the better conditions for the um, African Americans. After that, uh, some researches, especially free references that I use for this work, very important to me, and uh, some suggestions on movies and books, especially for books. If you like this theme, these books are really interesting, in my opinion. So um, thank you very much to all of you for your time and for your attention.